Gutman is a food writer for Haaretz. Her work has appeared in the Washington Post and Moment Magazine, among others. A chef of Jewish Iraqi descent, Vera cooked for the White House Passover Seder in 2014. After Vera's Iraqi grandmother, Rachel of blessed memory passed away, her cousin Toya, Victoria Levy, took it upon herself to fill the void in the family's hearts and bellies. One of her duties was to, pe to prepare the tabit. And so, Vered Gutman will now do a cooking demonstration of Aunt Toya's tabit. Thank you, thank you Ephraim. And thank you, Maurice, this was very interesting. Uh, Ephraim, the way you just described the uh, Antoya's um, role, uh, especially after my grandmother Rachel died, um, that was very accurate. So me and my husband uh, were lucky enough to get a cooking lesson from Toya years ago. Um, and one of the things she taught us was how to stuff the chicken and with rice, cover it with rice, cook it overnight for the well-known uh, Jewish Iraqi dish called tbit. Now, uh, uh, tbit is one of the real, specifically Jewish Iraqi uh, dishes. It's not just Iraqi, it's specifically Jewish. Uh, but I know of uh, Muslim Iraqis who, who uh, made it at home, who told me that their mothers used to make it at home. They all knew that they learned it from the Iraqi Jews. Um, and uh, it's a beloved uh, dish in Iraq. Um, this is part of the Jewish tradition in general of cooking um, overnight stews uh, because according to the Kashrut laws, we're not allowed to cook uh, on Shabbat itself. And in order to eat a uh, warm lunch or dinner on Shabbat, you want to put uh, any dish um, uh, in the oven or uh, on the stovetop, um, in the tanur back then, uh, cook it all night long on very low heat uh, and serve it when it's tender, falling apart, caramelized the next day. Uh, so to beat is the Iraqi version. You're probably also familiar with the Ashkenazi Cholent. Uh, there's the Adafina and Sahina from North Africa, Arisa in Yemen. Um, there's Hamin uh, that came from Spain, and it's, that's the name we use in Israel as well. All these are dishes that are cooked overnight uh, to be consumed on Shabbat. Um, so I want to start immediately. This is the chicken. I feel like uh, Julia Child having raw chicken here like that. Um, my grandmother, Rachel, used to uh, go to the butcher and ask for an old chicken because what you wanted to have is a very fat, uh, lard chicken because the, the, it will benefit from the fat uh, having to stand to, to spend the night in the oven. Um, so chicken moves here to the side. Um, I have one pound of rice in here. It was already soaked in the last hour and then I strained it. Um, the tbit has, as I mentioned, it is stuffed with rice and spices. We're going to see it in a second. And then covered in rice and cooked like that. So, and there's a difference between the rice you stuff in. It's, it has more uh, spices. Uh, it has chicken gizzards with it. So that's what I'm going to make now. So I'm taking one cup of rice from the already uh, soaked rice. Um, I'm adding gizzards. You can also use chicken hearts. Uh, if, you, if it's too much for you, um, you can use um, ground beef as well. 
uh, the gizzards are uh, chopped into quarters, so they're small pieces. I'm gonna mix it together. Now, um, my grandmother and uh, Aunt Toya did not use much spices with their tpit, um, but after I published uh, Toya's recipe uh, for Aretz years ago, when I just started writing for them actually, um, Toya's, um, Toya's cousin, Latif, his uh, wife, uh, Swad, Najad, who they live in, uh, in uh, LA, uh, she sent me her recipe. Now, uh, Swad and Latif uh, moved from Baghdad to uh, Iran and were living there for a while. I don't know if this is why uh, the way they spice their chicken is kind of exotic and beautiful, and I just love it. So that's what we're gonna use. I use uh, rose petals uh, for this. I'm gonna put it in this mortar and pestle. Now this mortar and pestle I got from Toya. She brought it with her from Baghdad to, um, to Israel. And after she died, um, I inherited it. I love it. can use it. I have um, peeled cardamom in here that I'm gonna use. Um, some cinnamon. Uh, just in case you're wondering, rose petals you can get uh, at most uh, Middle Eastern stores. Um, okay, one teaspoon of salt and some black pepper. And I'm gonna crush it all together. and put it all with the chicken uh, and gizzards. Let me mix that briefly. So the rice inside the chicken, uh, it's full of flavor. It gets also the flavor from uh, the chicken itself, of course. I'm adding one tablespoon of uh, tomato paste. Gonna mix it again. Okay. And now, um, one interesting way of doing this, um, and I'm gonna put uh, gloves now uh, because uh, I don't usually use gloves while cooking at home, but I want to continue cooking. Uh, quickly without washing my hands while I'm doing this demonstration. Um, in some versions, look, uh, we have the uh, neck in here. In some versions of this, what people are doing is they uh, remove the chicken breast uh, from the skin. So leaving the skin whole, it's, it takes a long time to do, Ooh, but I was able to do it in the past. But it's a lot of work. I'm not going to show it now. Uh, just because the, the uh, rice that's stuffed into the chicken is prized, uh, it's like the best part, one of the best parts. Um, people remove uh, most of the meat from inside the chicken and just stuff it with the rice. We're not going to do it today. So uh, what we're going to do is just stuff uh, this rice into the cavity of the chicken. You don't want to stuff it too much because uh, ri rice, of course, will grow um, as we uh, cook it. So uh, you don't want to, the chicken, you don't want the skin to collapse and the chicken to break. Um, at this point, I'm going to uh, tie the legs together. That's, again, it's, uh, it's done so, uh, so we can make sure that the rice is stayed uh, inside. So I have a twine here. I'm just gonna roll it around the chicken legs together and, oops, just like that. Uh, I need the water, surely. Someone, I'm uh, sorry. I, I yes. Can't. 
I can't type the question for some reason. Um, Larissa wanted to know where did you get the mortar and pestle, the um, the bowl and the thing to ground the spice, or where where could we get that? As I mentioned, uh, I inherited it from uh, right. my aunt. Uh, you can get it in so many stores. It doesn't need to be uh, the same type. Uh, the one that I have is uh, is made of uh, metal. I'm not sure if it's brass or I'm not sure what it is actually. Um, but you can get different kinds. Uh, you know, any kitchen store actually. So uh, what I'm doing now is uh, I put the chicken with some oil in the pot. Um, I'm gonna add some, it's not necessary, but uh, if you can find chicken necks, uh, add it, uh, put it around the chicken. Of course you have what you've said that can, um, so you can add it, uh, Inside, we're gonna keep uh, the extra rice. I have uh, kind of a lot of extra rice here, and uh, I'm gonna mix it with the rest of the rice, of the plain rice that I have. Um, and we're gonna move to the oven. So I'm um, gonna turn it on uh, medium high heat. Um, and usually now we're gonna add uh, water, bring it to boil, um, add some salt for flavor, uh, cook the chicken for about 10 minutes. And at this point, we're gonna sprinkle the rice all over. Um, and uh, again, let it cook for a while. Now, usually I would put um, uh, room temperature, water at room temperature. But in this case, uh, I'm actually using uh, boiling water uh, for the demonstration so we can do it uh, faster. I'm adding um, two teaspoons of salt all around the water. It will uh, help uh, season the chicken itself and the rice that we're gonna sprinkle. Um, okay. Uh, just a second, let me bring the cover also. Okay, I'm gonna cover it so it will uh, boil quicker. Um, as, we, as, as we wait for the chicken, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, my family and the Farhood uh, and my family in Iraq in general. It's on my father's side that um, and my family, uh, my father was born in Baghdad and uh, we can only assume that his family was there as most Iraqis for uh, 2,500 years. Um, and uh, in 1941, on Shavuot, my grandfather Moshe um, uh, was on his way to synagogue or on his way back from synagogue. He was wearing white for Shavuot. He was wearing the clothes that he would wear for uh, going to synagogue. And uh, two Iraqi Muslim men stopped him uh, with a gun and threatened to kill him. Um, at that point, one of them said to the other, just pray to Allah and let him go. And, and uh, my grandfather ran away um, and he was saved. Um, but this... Uh, caused my family to decide to leave uh, Baghdad. And they left uh, about two years later in 43, when my father was a year old, they uh, left Baghdad, moved to Tel Aviv uh, earlier than most uh, Iraqi Jews uh, left uh, Baghdad. They um, took a taxi to go to Tel Aviv all the way. And uh, they've been living there ever since. Um, Okay, it's already starting to boil. Let's give it another minute. Um, uh, if anyone has any questions about uh, the dish, uh, you can type it down, I assume, and uh, ask me or... Okay, Shauli, can you uh, bring the camera here, please?
Okay, yeah, in general, I would, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I would let it cook for, uh, for like 10 minutes, but um, it's fine. Um, for the demonstration, we're not gonna just uh, let it wait. And what I'm doing now, as you can see, all the... <laughs> uh, it was just overnight. It's not that far. Um, and they actually also had a tr truck with all the furniture that they brought with them. Um, so uh, I sprinkled the, uh, the leftover rice, which is about four more cups, because remember we had a full uh, pound of rice. We put it all over. Um, and again, bring it to boil and cook it uh, a little longer. Now, um, again, I'm going to cover it to make it quicker. And let me explain one thing. Um, what, as I mentioned, the rice inside the chicken is wonderful. It's full of flavor. It's, it's getting very dark from all the spices. And then you have the outside rice. Uh, that when it uh, rises, it will cover most of the chicken and that's how we're gonna put it later in the oven. Um, and uh, one of the best, the other best parts of uh, the meals is the crispy crust of the chicken. If you leave it on the stove top, um, it will get a crust um, at the bottom. So. If you want to have that crust, you need to leave it for about half an hour uh, on the stove top and only then transfer it to the oven. I'm going to turn the oven on 225. I cannot see with my glasses. Um, so uh, I want to cook it for at least 10 minutes until the rice uh, rises at least a little bit. Again, if you want the crust, leave it for half an hour in here and only then uh, transfer it to the um, to the oven. Um, um, as we wait, I'll also mention this. Once the rice is cooked after the 10 minutes uh, or after the half an hour, but before you put it in the, um, in the oven, you want to put eggs. These are not cooked yet. You can just put them like, just like that around the chicken um, and they will be cooked all night um, in the oven. These are the, uh, what the Sephardi Jews call haminados, uh, meaning they are uh, brown eggs. Uh, like in the morning, the yolk is going to be very creamy um, and the egg white is going to turn light brown. It's unbelievable how tender and wonderful these eggs are. This is the Jewish Iraqi breakfast on Shabbat. You eat eggs, you eat uh, fried eggplant. Um, that's basically just fried eggplant. You, you soak, my grandmother used to soak eggplant Michael slices. On the other phone. Excuse me, as someone is talking? Mm -hmm. um, please refrain, please keep your mics on mute. You okay, can thank you. submit questions in the chat, thank you. Thanks. Um, uh, um, what was I going to say? Oh, the breakfast, the Jewish Iraqi breakfast. It's the uh, hard boiled eggs that were cooked with the beef all night. Uh, you have fried eggplant, tahini and pita bread and it's wonderful. And actually this has become, if any of you ever visited Israel in the last few years, this Iraqi breakfast became a very well known and loved uh, street food called sabih, meaning breakfast in uh, in Arabic, uh, pita stuff with everything that I just mentioned. Um, okay, the rice is already, it's not really cooked, of course, but it's half cooked. Shirley, can you show? You see that the rice is up already. So I'll just show you uh, again, we're making this uh, shorter than the usual. Um, I'm just putting the eggs in here. Okay, we're gonna cover. And the next step you wanna do uh, is to cover the lid here with aluminum foil to make sure, because with any overnight Shabbat stew, 
you're going to cook it until tomorrow lunch. So uh, you really, wait a second, I need to bring the towel. Um, you really want to make sure that uh, the steam stays inside, that the chicken, uh, that there's enough steam to keep the chicken from drying out. Um, so it's important, it's really important to cover it also with the aluminum foil. If you have a good uh, pot that's large enough, like a Dutch oven that's large enough with a heavy uh, cover, uh, then that's fine. Then you don't need, you may not need the aluminum, but I really prefer to, to put it like that. Uh, I feel it's, uh, I feel, um, that there's more chances that it's going to be moist and wonderful. So that's it. Um, in 10 minutes, I'm going to put it in the 225 degrees oven. You can check it again before you go to sleep to make sure the steam is still there. Um, and then it's going to be hard to sleep at night because the smell from it just fills the house. You just want to eat all night long. You have dreams of the chicken. And you wake up in the morning, you can at least start with some eggplant and the caminados, and then this for lunch. Uh, that's all. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer. So food is a powerful conduit for memory. So thank you, Vered, for demonstrating how to make Antoya's to beat a, an Iraqi Jewish dish that helps us to remember her and connect with Babylonian Jewry as we commemorate the Farhud. Now, music is also a powerful conduit for memory. And next, we have Lulwa Khazum. Mm -hmm.